DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. Tonight's DJ and TV show is sponsored in part by Electro Voice, DJ Event Planner, ADJ, NLFX Professional, Promo Only, Newmark, and DJ and TV Insiders. And now it's time for Running Your DJ Business with KC and Brian B. with special guest Byron Gunter. Brian, good Yo. evening. And happy good late evening. night, from what I understand, from talking to you pre-show. Early tell morning. Me. Early tell morning. Me. Yeah. Tell everybody where you're at and what you're doing. It's pretty exciting stuff. Yeah. So um, I'm actually here. The main reason why I'm, I'm in Europe right now in uh, Vienna, Austria. But uh, the main reason I'm here is I have a wedding on Monday and then I have in Italy and then in another part of Italy, I'm going to the engage conference, which is one of their four that they host and I'm mixing and uh, you know, basically voice of God for their main sessions. And uh, so basically, and then I had a week to kill basically between pro mobile, which I also spun and spoke at. So I was like, I need to, I'm not going to go home and get readjusted to the time and have to come right back. That's stupid. Sure. Uh, so, and you know, flights were cheap. And uh, so now I was just trying to fill my calendar. So Got I've been it. literally calling like anybody I know that is a DJ. And that's the, what I love about the internet right now is you can literally find anybody. <laughs> um, yeah. That, and what's cool is you and I talked earlier this week on our Facebook chat. So even talking on, uh, yeah, you were in what, in Austria at the time? No, uh, that was yesterday, right? I think so. Yeah, that was uh, Frankfurt, Frankfurt, yeah, Germany. Frankfurt, Germany. Just so like, I had, uh, just like Bill Murray. It's like Wisconsin. You zip in, you zip out. Exactly. Some so I had to get two... the reference. If you're under forty, you'll be like, "What's he talking about?" <laughs> so. Yeah. So anyway, I had like two two of the four days where I was going to have some gigs. Tonight's was funny because I was supposed to do a, a school dance, which I spent like hours researching, like what kids in Vienna are into. So I uh, looked on Shazam, like all the hits that kids are sh- Shazamming out here. And then I went okay. to a couple stuff and it, the gig fell through. But my Airbnb host hooked me up with a bar, a local bar. So nice. today, so it wasn't all lost, um, but anyway, it was. Uh, it's cool. So uh, I have the night off tomorrow, and then got the wedding on Monday, and, uh, and that's, it. that's it. And home, headed home on Tuesday then. No, so I, m- weddings on Monday, Tuesday I go to the the engage thing, and then I'm oh, there that's till. Right. That's right. You said that. I apologize. Yeah, there till Saturday. Fly home. I get home at eight o'clock at night. And then I take a 9 a.m. flight to Midwest DJs Live. And so when I'm you there. get home, your wife is going to be like, who are you? Yeah. And she, I'm okay. going to be like, hi, bye. <laughs> gotcha. So anyway. Got it. Very good. What about you? How, how are you doing? I mean, you got, you know, the show coming up. We're 80 and... days out. 80 okay. days out, people. How so, are you doing on your, uh, your weight loss challenge? Weight loss is good. I'm officially, I can say now, Brian tried pimping me out and embarrassing me in front of everyone. No, no, no. Yeah, you did. You're like, hey, everybody, Casey's going to lose 100 pounds. <laughs> hey. The good part is, like, I'm never embarrassed. I'm the guy who wears shorts to a DJ conference, remember? So right. from that aspect, like, it wasn't that. But just like anything in life, when you decide it's time, it's time. And for whatever reason, I realized it was, uh, I said, April 9th to July 9th, I'm just going to eat clean. And I've been eating clean. I'm on day 10. So it's nothing to write home about. You know, my pants aren't falling off anymore <laughs> than they did before. But um, 
but the reality is that uh, I've been eating totally, totally clean. So no beer, I'm proud of you, man. I'm no alcohol, you. no uh, soda, uh, no pizza, which was killing me, absolutely killing mm. me. And then, uh, um, you know, even last night at ADJA, the chapter ordered in pizza. We had two liters of pop, and I was drinking water in the corner. I had eaten ahead of time and gotten some pulled chicken and some veggies, and I was I was cool. So. So that's that. So, yes, folks, July 9th, you'll see a skinnier Keith Christopher. Okay. Oh, man, that's awesome. That's or you awesome. guys will be like, dude, what happened? You're still fat now. You know, <laughs> I'm throwing you out of my show now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, so that's that. So, yeah, so Marquee is coming together. Next week, we're going to release day three. So if you're watching and you haven't been online, our agenda for Sunday, which Sunday, the only thing happening is – uh Alan Berg is hosting a private master's workshop for 10 people. I think it's $600, but you're there all day with him and with nine other people. So it's like a very small, intimate, one-on-one -on -one almost kind of a vibe, really small classroom type thing. And then uh, Monday, we've got a full lineup party Monday night. Tuesday's lineup is up there. And Tuesday night, we're not doing anything. Um, Tuesday night, Donnie... Um, why do I say, uh, yeah, Donnie Lewis. Why am I, th I, all of a sudden I started coming up with a different name, but, um, he's going to be doing an advanced projector mapping and cake mapping workshop right after the show's over. So literally we're done at five and then you can start at like five fifteen with him. So if you, if you're really, he's going to be doing a seminar on it that afternoon, which is definitely going to make you get excited. And then all of the co things where you're going, God, I wish I would have learned this or this or this. And it's not a teaser. It's not an infomercial. But mm -hmm. if you really are intrigued and you want to go to the next step, then you can take his workshop. I think it's $99. So it's very reasonable. And you're going to actually get to play with it and, and be involved and see it, feel it, touch it. And then uh, we'll be announcing Wednesday officially um, next week. And Wednesday night, we'll have a closing night party. And then Thursday, uh, Randy Bartlett is sticking around. And he's doing his uh, microphone technique workshop. There's only 12 spaces and eight of them are already taken. So, and wow. yeah, and this is, as of right now, Randy's saying that he's done doing workshops and who knows, like, here's the good part. It's his life. He can do whatever he wants to, but let's put it this way. It's the last time I know that he's going to be in the Midwest for quite a while. Hmm. So I've taken the class. I think it's great. I even had my nephew take it when he was 14. And and now the kid, uh, he works at a drive-in movie theater. And my sister-in-law cracks up because he's so smooth on the microphone for a 17-year-old. And he's not scared of it at all. So you don't hear like the, and, uh, ooh, uh, and he just cruises through it like he's a radio DJ. So it's pretty cool. It was funny listening. To, she she actually uh, recorded it while on the screen and and posted it and saying it's so weird to hear my son talking on a on a microphone that way <laughs> so so there was that and then uh so that's thursday and that's all she wrote and then um friday i'm gonna drink a lot so that's gonna be it so so that's what that's what my life is i am all marquee and then we're coming into the season so for us dj photo booth photography video and floral we're starting to come into our season and uh and that's that. So, so that's what's going on in my world. So fantastic. Yes. So, and for those of you now looking, and he's got his name up on here, you're wondering uh, who the uh, how we got the drummer from Megadeth into the uh, band. <laughs> into the band, we have uh, Byron Gunter from Buckeye Entertainment, who I have uh, in my description called him the what did I call you? The controversial bad? No, the outspoken. <laughs> bad boy of the DJ business because uh, he is uh, very forthcoming with his thoughts and opinions on things. And uh, I've had to put a muzzle on him. He has agreed not to use profanity. Which so, is going to be rough. Right. Uh, now I'll do my best. Now, Brian and Byron have a little bit of a disagreement about an article <laughs> that Brian just wrote for just Jackie news where Brian has a theory. You're struggle with this all the Brian Byron thing back and forth. I'm I'll curious. just call you number one and number two. So, <laughs> so, but the thing about it is that Brian wrote an article this past uh, month for Disjockey News, 
and it was about having a side hustle. And and I'll let him go into like the Reader's Digest of it. Byron <laughs> didn't agree with him, which is okay because this is America and you can decide whatever. So Brian thinks he's right. Byron thinks he's <laughs> wrong. I just want to throw you two in a steel cage and see <laughs> what comes out. But um, I don't know if you guys saw, and I don't, Byron probably more so than Brian, uh, you guys were the, it was the topic of conversation on Joe and Mike's uh, podcast today. Yeah, and yeah. So, I got briefly. So they talked about the concept of the side hustle and what's the definition of a side hustle and, and that. And so once again, I feel like, you know, we're all talking about the same thing. It just seems like we tend to bring it up first since it's usually our topics and our things and they're just riding our coattails but that's the way i'm going to choose to view it <laughs> they're going to say oh, it's on social media but since we're the ones doing it you know we're taking the credit so with that brian you give us the reader's yeah. digest what's your theory the idea was the side hustle and go yeah i mean it was actually it's funny I, I didn't even think it was going to be controversial at all i wasn't trying to put out there i think uh one thing i did learn because uh, i'm still new to the whole writing game is uh you know, nothing. I should have definitely started off the article saying that there's two ways to skin a cat because there definitely is uh, to be successful. And um, this was just something that has worked for me, which was basically um, bringing in another revenue stream. And okay. you know, something that I believe in is um, having multiple income streams. And of course, that doesn't mean, you know, giving up your day job, if you will, if your DJ job is your day job, which it is for a lot of us, uh, then, and you know, what? You know not, not to interrupt, Mike Walter actually brought up a really good point for those of you going the traditional way where you're leaving your full time job to start your own business, whether that be DJ or photography or, or house painter, he brought up a really good point that if you're going to do this, especially if you're married, you should have four months put away sure. to live on no matter yeah. what and i think that's great because i think we all get caught up in the in the oh my god it'll be great i'm going to be my own boss i'm going to do this and you fall into the romance of it and then all of a sudden you realize like you're broke and that's a big problem so it happened to me <laughs> okay <laughs> like Which when i first started out i thought i had it you know had enough and uh ended up having to humble myself <laughs> and okay. realize that I, I didn't have it all together. So I, I, I definitely agree with that strategy. I'd say six months to be honest with you. Okay. Um, that's, fair. that's just whatever. So anyways, right. long story short, it's just one way. I think it's not the only way by any stretch, but um, it's just something that worked for me. So I kind of was just sharing that on the, in the, in the article is where I was at with it. Got it. Okay. And so you put up your theory on the side hustle and stuff. And then Byron, you know, being the, uh, what do you call it? The, the outspoken person that he is, he, sorry. For some reason, this is the second week in a row that I can't get us on my computer, but I can get, um, but I can get me on my phone. So I don't know why my Facebook live is not, it's just not agreeing with my computer, but I'm on the phone. So I'm doing it so that I can monitor like who's saying hello and who's got questions. So feel free. I'm on both that and on YouTube. So, uh, so that's where we're at. Anyhow, go on. Uh, so Brian's got the hustle and Byron has a, he thinks it sends the wrong message and Byron take it away with no F bombs and no bags <laughs> of anything. No bags of anything. I can't. No bags of anything. Oh man. No. So I'm so I'm reading this article, right? And and uh, and the first thing that Brian said was this is geared at full time DJs, which is what I'm at. I you know I've been doing this since 2010, okay. uh, full time, right? In 2011, right. my photo booth made enough, made more than my wife made teaching kindergarten. So okay. we're like, honey, let's just buy another photo booth, and you can quit your job. So we've been together as a family Monday through Thursday for you know eight years now. And I'm at the point where this is going to be my last season of DJing weddings myself. So and why is that? What's your reasoning? Well, because, well, there's a, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, one, my Give kids, I've got, a, I've got an eight year old and a five year old, right? Okay. Like, Good. I, That's a great I'm reason. Missing, I'm missing stuff on the, I caught myself on, uh, on Saturdays, you know, soccer games. You can say stuff. It's fine. Yeah. Man, well, that's not what I was going to say. I but, so, no, so, you know, the family aspect of it, yeah, we're together during the week, but a lot of stuff happens on the weekends. And so I feel like I'm missing that. And I'm at the okay. point now where um, I feel like there's a disconnect. You know, the brides are all staying the mm -hmm. same age and, 
And I, this it's not as fun as it used to be. I'm getting close to 40 and the brides are all 25, 20, you know, 24, 25. Like I don't want to spin mumble rap. I want to be, I want to be doing <laughs> big balls. You know what I mean? Like, okay. uh, I'm a, I'm a businessman first. I'm an entrepreneur first and a DJ second. I didn't get into this because I really, really like DJing. I got into it because I saw a, a hole in our market. So right. I'm not retiring from the company. In fact, I'll actually make more money by not DJing than I will actually out DJing because I get to replace myself and I make X amount of dollars per year from each one of my rigs. So it'll actually okay. be more profitable for me to walk away Got um, it. from the end of it. But my thing was that with the side hustle, he's like, well, you need another source of income, but it takes away from, from your main, your main job, if you will. So the CEO of McDonald's or the CEO of, of whatever, the, the plumbing, successful plumbing company down the road, nine out of 10 of them don't have side hustles. Why? Because they make enough money with their main business. They don't need a side hustle. If you, right. if you aren't making enough money with your company, then you should be spending that time that you're doing your side hustle, building your company to get to a point where you don't need to do anything else. You know, okay. I, I, I get hedging for, for like a downturn, like if the economy goes south and we're not booking as many weddings, but right. I've diversified and people have been like, that's a solid hustle too, which I've diversified with the photography and like we're sitting right now in my wedding venue, you know, and that's next door to my office. But I feel like that is the same Avenue. It's not Uber. You know, I'm not, I'm not going out and right. I'm not, I'm not becoming a mechanic on, you know, weeknights. And so right. that aspect of it, and then, you know, just losing time with your family, you know, my kids are young, they're only young once. Why would I spend my free time out, you know, hauling people around in an Uber when I, like right now we're not at my office because we have meetings going on over there and there's at, all week long meetings going on and that's making me money. So, okay. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't really see the need if you if you did this successfully and you're, and you, and you're good at what you do and you've created like what I've got here, a monster, then you don't need a side hustle. Okay. You know, but, but now let's play devil's advocate, right? You have been blessed that between your talent and your charming personality, <laughs> that's that, charming. Okay. That, uh, that you've been able to make it, but now let's just say for the sake of argument, sure. John Doe DJ, doesn't have your charisma, maybe doesn't have your business experience. Cause you even were, you even admitted, um, I forgot where it was, maybe on one of the Facebook things or somewhere that you said that you've had businesses before where you didn't write a business plan and they weren't as successful. And I think you admitted that some of them even may have failed. Oh, and yeah. right. And so, okay. So now you're in a failing business. Okay. And, and I don't even want to use the word failing. Let's just say struggling business. Okay. Sure. Question being is if you have to turn to a side hustle because your market is turned down and, and uh, Brian shared a couple of years ago, I think it was the oil spill, right, Brian? Yeah. 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 So Brian's uh, B-Boy Productions is in Florida. The oil spill killed a lot of the tourism and he's a destination DJ. So what's he supposed to do? There's, there's nothing he can do except turn to the side hustle. Right? right. Well, I get, I get being, you know, situations out of your control. There's a zombie apocalypse and nobody's getting married. Sure. Like I get no, I that. Get but if you're failing because you suck at what you do, then maybe you should reevaluate why mm -hmm. and how you're doing it. You know, there's a guy but in my market, like, but a lot of people don't think they suck at what they do. And a lot right. of, like you talk to most DJs, they tell you, Oh, I love doing it. Now, if you turned around and watched a video and go, well, yeah, John Doe, you may love it, but I'm looking at a video of you and you're just not very good at it. Now, right. that's one of those things like unless and that's where we don't have a Simon Cowell in our industry that's going to just rip you to shreds and say, you know what, dude, you, you need to buy a photo booth. You may love the wedding business, but you don't have the skill set to have a dynamic personality to to do it. And I mean, and I've had people that have worked for me. Actually, I've got one guy who worked for me. I never felt he was dynamic enough to be a lead entertainer for a DJ company. He went out and started his own, and he's got like seven guys working for him or six guys working for him. So maybe I misjudged him, you know. And I had another guy that he busted his butt to prove to me that he was. I never wanted to give him the shot. My general manager back in the day gave him the shot. And, uh, you know, and he worked for us for a long time and brides liked him. And, you know, was he, did he have the charisma of Brandy Bartlett or Mike Walter or whatever, you know, but the brides that we assigned him to absolutely loved him. So, you know, some people like chocolate, some people like vanilla. I, I get that. But 
my whole thing is like you were so adamant about like side hustles wrong. So I'm trying to figure out. It is because, well, in case in point, so there's a guy in my market. When I started, I did my first wedding in 2009, and there was a multi-op in my market. And three or four years later, he wasn't booking anything. He blamed me, and he blames me for his divorce. He blames me for his kids smoking weed. Like, it's all my fault because Well, you sold the kid the weed, weed, right? Yeah, of course. No, I don't. Okay. I got, I got one vice and I do it well and that's drinking. And we're going to stay with that. So, okay. uh, but, but uh, he, so, so this guy, the issue wasn't me. It was him because he, he wears sequin vests. He DJs with CDs. Like he's mm-hmm. just out of touch. He's an older guy. Right. Sure. Like, it just, somebody else came in that was better and that could, could market themselves to the clientele that we have. And so it wasn't me is him. I turned away 2,390 people last year because we were booked. I have freaking nightmares about that number. Um, And so there's plenty of business out there in our market and it's not, it's not me, it's him. So if you are not, if you are not full, if you're full time and you're, and you're failing at this and you've got to look to a side hustle, then either you, I think that you should either, you know, reevaluate yourself honestly or or move on or don't call yourself a full time, you know, Mm -hmm. business owner. You're a part timer. Right. Right. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think that's a hard pill to swallow. I mean, we all wake up in the morning and what I see in the mirror is not what you see of me, right. nor is it what Brian, you know, and so it, it's a hard pill to swallow sometimes, you know, and that's why it's always interesting to see DJs fighting on all of the DJ bulletin boards or, or now group pages because, you know, you think chocolate is right. Brian thinks vanilla is right. And the reality is if it works for both of you, then neither one of you is wrong. You're just different flavors. Right. So you just happen to be very outspoken about it. That's I mean, all. all I did was put one little post out there and then all hell broke loose. Can I say hell? <laughs> yeah, hell is okay. That's okay. the four all letter right. word you're allowed to use. Okay. And we'll, we'll cap it at that. So, <clears throat> um, but no, I think that, um, I, I mean, I get to where you're coming from and I even understand it from, it's funny because even Mike and, uh, even Mike and Joe said that after reading your article and also hearing what you had to say about it, Mike said, like, he goes, I get both of their points, and I can't say that either one of them's wrong, but everybody does what they have to do for what's right. You know, like, I'm well, a- let me go on, go ahead. Brian. No, I'll just say, I wanted to clarify, I want to clarify something because, again, the, I, I, that's what's so tough about writing these articles is sometimes like it, the point doesn't come across well <laughs> if you don't like totally right. spell it out, and I'm limited to a word count. So, I, I never intended it to be something that would. Uh, be utilized if you couldn't make ends meet with your day job. That's not why you should have a side hustle, in my opinion. Okay. You should be able to make your DJ business work if you're a DJ owner. If you can't do that, then there's something seriously, like Byron said, flawed with your with your approach. And relook at that. My thought was this is for people who are successful, <laughs> who can add to the, another layer of income to them. I mean, you look at a guy like Mike and Joe, and I, I wanted to address their podcast today too because – you know, they said that they felt like him speaking and doing workshops, that that was all out of the same bucket. And I disagree completely. Uh, okay. they're, they're marketing it differently. It's not, they're not marketing to brides for their workshop. The, the money, uh, the, they have a website that's completely different for that particular market. They're marketing to DJs for what they do. And sure, it comes out of their success from their day job, which is to DJ. But to me, those are two, those are side hustles that they're doing because it's completely out of realm. Now, is it similar? Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> um, and the other thing I want to mention too is, uh, you know, somebody, I think it was Byron just said it about the CEO of McDonald's not having a side hustle. Wrong. Guess what? He couldn't make it with the C, with, with McDonald's. He said, I got a real estate business. That is what drives everything at McDonald's. That, that is, is true. So, I mean- he couldn't make it. I mean, just you, you saw the movie, right? right. Um, so to be, to be frank, I mean, I really believe that side hustles are supposed to add value to what you do and not necessarily detract from your day job. That's kind See, of, I, I think like. we're drawing a line though. I think where the line is, there's, there's a, there's a line, like what are, what do you think is a side hustle versus what I think a side hustle is? And mm. I'm with Mike and, and even with the CEO of McDonald's, you know, the real estate was the real estate for the business, for the building. So I think that that's just an extension. You know, what, what says that, what ends being a DJ owner, right? Like where is, Hey, this is no longer the, the realm of, but, that, but I think what happens is, 
you have to decide, are you a DJ or are you in the wedding business? Like, right. I think you would argue that you're in the wedding business. Right. Whereas Brian would argue that he's a DJ, mm-hmm. you know? And I would yeah. say Joe Budden is a, is a DJ. Mike Walters in the wedding business. Cause he's also diversified into video and photography and such. So the question being is, is Joe Budden, for example, are his DVDs and his speaking or his workshops a side hustle? Yeah. It's kind of like would, tomato, tomato. Right. You know, I but think yeah. they're splitting hairs. But the art, the, what, what Brian said in his article specifically was, was Uber or Lyft, right? That, right. that, yeah. that yeah, specifically yeah. is a side hustle. There's no doubt right. about that, right? Like, right. that's not like Ray. And so that's, that was the exception that I took. Like, I have no problem with, with those guys if they want to do the speaking circuit or, you know, with me, I'm opening another wedding venue and a transportation company. Like, I feel like that is all part of the wedding business. as Right. Said. So to me, that's not a side hustle. That's just me expanding my market. That's me knowing the market, finding avenues and ways to, to expand to make more money as right. opposed to, hey, I need to make sure that if I, you know, my retirement's funded, so I'm going to go hop in my car and go pick up pe- drunk ass, drunk people. Right. Drive them to the- You're close. That's <laughs> a three letter them. word. You, as long so, as you don't hit the four, we're okay. All right. Because we don't have a dump button to my knowledge. I don't know how to turn <laughs> you off. So we're not on a delay of any sort. We're no, to- we're not. Well, and I will say, I think uh, Mike made a great point on his podcast today. And Baron, you may have said it too, but the message that it sends to your staff, if you can't, uh, especially as a multi-op owner, if you're having to turn to a side hustle because of the fact that, you know, that's a great point. Yeah. Clarify. Brian, did you happen to hear the podcast today? I did. I did. Yeah. Byron. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I I did. Mr. Gunter. I did. And yeah. I made that, I made that argument um, before in my post mm-hmm. with you, Brian, because, you know, I'm reading yeah. this article, let's say I don't know anything about you. Right. And right, I'm reading this right. article again, Brian's a luxury DJ who flies all over the world to DJ. And then you're advocating that you drive Uber right side to me because you're trying to pretend to be something you're not. So totally is the, is, is a DJ is a multi-op owner with my staff. If they saw me on Tuesday night driving an Uber, like, no way, like all the, the respect would just be out the window. Yeah. But you know right. what's funny is I'll take you back. In, we're talking like 1993. So I'm like three years into the business. I'm full time and I'm taking on my first full time employee. I delivered pizzas at lunchtime to make sure that I was making enough money to cover his check every single week. And you know what? I had more people that respected me for that because I did the side hustle to make sure I could cover that check and I wasn't living with rose colored you know, glasses. But that's different. I mean, you were, you were new, you were, you were just creating your multi-op. I mean, we're at the point now we're bringing over, you know, it's almost $600,000 a year. And if I can't, if I can't pay my bills and fund my retirement with that kind of money coming in, you know, then you're but that but again, but you can't, you got to take you out of it. Right. So let's go to John Doe in Des Moines, Iowa. Okay. Who want, who loves DJing, but he's just not making enough. Okay. Which is what Brian argued is it wasn't that wasn't geared toward. I mean, he said that it was specifically for full timers that make this their full time job. Okay. So I think yeah, and there's a difference too. I think like what it looks like if you are a multi op owner and what it looks like if you're only a single op. I mean, if you're a single op and you're having troubles making ends meet, again, you should look at your business. But I don't think that who cares if you're driving an Uber? No one's going to look at your company and go, oh, you know, this guy's having right. to drive Uber on the weekends. But a multi-op, that would look terrible because you're here you are trying to add staff to your stuff and you're out doing that. I think it's the job at that point that becomes the issue. Like if like if, a, if you, you are a successful multi-op owner and you decide to start um, a, a nonprofit charity to be able to help other people, no one's going to look at you and go, oh my God, this guy all of a sudden is, is, you know, his business must be failing. No, no, no. He's trying to do something else. I think right. people look at that. So it's, it's really at that point becomes down to what job it is that you're doing. Yeah. Right. But that side hustle isn't funding your retirement, which is what you were advocating in the article. Like that's a charity is entirely yeah. different. I, I would agree right. with you hundred percent there, but that's not yeah. what, what you were well, saying. I should have, again, that's where my writing probably should have had some more stuff. I didn't mean, I didn't necessarily mean it would be funding your retirement. It's good to have as an extra right. source of income. But it, again, that's just an extra, an extra. And I was giving like multiple reasons for, you know, ways you could utilize this, this extra income or why you could, you could utilize a side hustle. Uh, right. and, and for those of you watching that didn't listen to Mike's podcast, Mike explained that many years ago, he shared in, he was in a, an office building and within the same floor of the office building was a bartending school. 
And he turned to one of his staff one day and said, you know, I think I might take a bartending school, you know, just for fun or whatever. And the, and his employee turned to him and said, are, are things really that bad? Are things not going well? And, and that's where, yeah, that's where that's, I'm saying it's the job title. See, if he said something like, hey, I'm going to buy a bar. I really want to own a bar. I think that that would never even come up that all of a sudden it's the job of being a bartender is below, you know, the CEO rank or whatever you want to call it. That's the difference. It's not the side hustle. It's the position or the job itself, I think is the issue. That's just gotcha. my own take. So if he said, I want to open up a bar and I'm going to go to bartending school, everyone would be like, yeah, but right. People be like, Oh dang, man, to open up a bar, you got to have some serious collateral to put that together. Most of the case, unless yeah. you're gonna, you know, bar or whatever but you know someone who says they're going to buy a bar is totally different than someone who says i'm going to be a bartender in my case you know now now here's what's interesting we're talking mike brought it up from an employee point of view as well as from a perhaps an industry point of view but the question being is um what do you think i mean a bride doesn't know that i mean a lot of brides today are just they're calling they're looking at a website and let's be honest most of our websites all look pretty identical, wouldn't you say? I mean, let's be honest. Like most of our pictures are the same. Like everyone's splash right. page is a romantic first dance, an uplighting picture, a group shot, and a candidate of some wacky person <laughs> dancing. Right? I mean, I don't, I don't disagree with you, with you there. Brides could care less. You know, they don't, they don't care for full time or part time. And right. And I, I think Brian would probably agree there mm-hmm. too. But really, that's, I mean, that's not, that's not what the article was geared. Like, I'm stuck on the fact that Brian said full time DJ company owners should get a side hustle. Like, I can care less if the brides know that I, you know, because half of my staff have day jobs. You know, one's an academic advisor at OSU. You know, another one works as a, as a secretary. So that's okay. And they still book out 50, 60 weddings a year. That's fine. Um, and it, for them, they need those two jobs to meet, make ends meet. But as a, as a company owner, mm, I don't know, mm. as, I, as I sit in what people probably would consider my side hustle. Uh, <laughs> gotcha. All right. So let's talk to some of our, uh, let's drive Mike Walter crazy if he's watching this and talk to uh, our uh, our adoring viewers so hello to everybody so that's all done um let's take a look here past the high hellos aaron abramson the ceo of mcdonald's does have a side hustle stock market or real estate investment okay um forgive me wab mobile entertainment you told me your name last time brian i'm turning to you to remember his name and i can't to save my life he says i have to work 24 7 to make everything at all because my market is really slow man i hate um, that firing guy <laughs> what's that when my employees just clocked in gotcha <laughs> um, uh jody thinks that i'm the new simon call of the dj business which is totally not true i am totally randy jackson dog um WAB says I'm not the best DJ in the world, but I can do the best that I can do, and that and I think that's a great attitude. Um, let's see, Scott Carroll, this is a passion for me after 37 years. Wow, 37 years is a long time to be doing some to be doing that. Uh, let's see, I'm going. Aaron Abramson. Most multimillionaires have multiple income streams. Passive income streams, investment stocks, bonds, cash flowing, real estate properties, et cetera. Which passive is different than than active, though. And Brian right. was arguing active. I mean, I've got I dump money in the stock market every week and I make money, you know. But that's that's a passive income source. It takes me five minutes to buy my stocks and off I go. Gotcha. That's different. That's Gus different. says I started twenty five years ago and was only a weekend warrior and still am. Now I would love to spend more time marketing myself better. Okay. Uh, Aaron, once again, the difference could be side hustle equals part-time job versus additional income. It's possible to have another income stream without having to exchange time for money. Um, That's true. I know one guy who does sells for Amazon, you know, and he just set it up and does it during the, during the winter. And literally it's just cashing checks. (laughs) It's like hitting his account while he's out and, and vacation. And again, that's, I guess it's, it's, you know, it's splitting hairs here, but and yeah. uh, Scott Carroll says, "Remember, guys, his DJ yeah, business yeah. is changing a lot," which I agree. I mean, and I've said this before at all my seminars. I've said it online. We are at the lowest marriage rate 
in the in the last hundred years in this country. So as a result of that, you know, not everybody's doing that well. I mean, I'm yeah. hustling harder than I've ever hustled before to make things happen, but I'm also selling myself at a somewhat premium rate compared to the national average. I know you are as well, Brian. Mm-hmm. And and there's that. So you still with us, Byron? Yeah, my wait. So I got I got a, one of my where how is the camera there? That's he thinks he's being funny back there. That's one of my employees. So okay, he just had to uh, finish up a meeting. He turned down your phone. Seriously, it's, the microphone can pick it up. Hey, thank you. Okay, there sorry. we go. Thanks. Look, fire that guy. Yeah, he's, he's uh, my second command too. You know, you think I don't know. Sometimes I wonder. Mm, mm, mm. So Jody asked question what was brian b's motivation reason for writing the article on a side hustle and getting this conversation started honestly i was just trying to find something that not everybody writes about like find something that because i mean we all hear about you know tips to mike to be a better mc tips to be a better dj and i felt like especially having played through this with some of the stuff that i mentioned in here um financial safety net you know was one of my points about how you know, um, having a man-made disaster, which we had happen. And now we had it happen last year for guys that are in Texas, right? They had this huge hurricane situation happen and their businesses was effect- were affected. People's gear was just completely gone. Okay. And so, uh, you know, I think just kind of thinking through, okay, well, maybe it's not a side hustle, but I need to think about what would happen if something happened to my business and I lost it. What would I be doing? You know, okay. do, is, your, is your nest egg big enough? And maybe that is just using your, your job you have and you put more in savings. Sure. And we were talking yeah. off air about six months or four months worth of uh, income saved. Right. So I just wanted to get people thinking about it. Um, you know, I definitely wasn't trying to say advocating like, hey, this is the only way or whatever. This is just to kind of get the, the conversation started. Okay. I think what um, I'm going to do is not become a realtor, but I'm going to figure out how to own a real estate school because I think everybody and their brother at some point in time goes to real estate school. I did. <laughs> did you? Okay. Yeah. You go. Yeah. You so, know what's funny is uh, a lot I, of people have. Yeah, I was a club DJ before I did the mobile thing full time. Okay. And uh, I my shift was twelve thirty till three thirty. That was my okay. shift. Uh, so I had eight hours during the day to kill, and I was like, "What else can I be doing?" And uh, and at the time, I wasn't even thinking about the mobile game. I was just thinking about the club DJing. And so I got my real estate license, thinking, "Oh, maybe I can do that." And I realized I was like. This ain't gonna be. This is not for me. <laughs> so, okay. Brian, just out of curiosity, do you? Yeah. Do you have kids? Do you have kids at all? No, I don't. Okay. That's another thing. Yeah. Yeah. See, I mean, that's that. That's part of it too. Like that right. free time that you advocate to go and spend to make more money. Like a right. lot of us, like myself, I value that time. You know, right. That I, I I force two days a week where I don't I don't do weddings, talk right. about wedding meetings, don't do anything, and it's Wednesday and Thursday, obviously right. based on schedules. But yeah, so that's my thing too. I'm like, man, I I, I put. I can't even tell you 80 plus hours a week in, in this business. Like right. the last thing I want to do is go, go, you know, miss hanging out with my daughter or my son, right. go drive some drunk person from the airport. So that was part of it too, that, that uh, right. I kind of, I kind of took exception to, cause I built this to the point where I don't need to do that. And you know, yeah, a downturn in the economy or there's a, there's a, you know, a natural disaster or whatever, like you should already be prepared for that. Mm-hmm. Um, financially. Yeah. And if right. you're not, then you're not doing it correctly. In my Absolutely. Personal- honestly so totally no valid points all around and uh yeah i i definitely think that you're right on all points there for sure so yeah i mean brian and byron byron Byron, the bees are getting along it's kind of (laughs) crazy i think it's funny how just like the web can just like blow things up like crazy like i i thought everything that byron said in his initial post was fine. Like I didn't take an exception to any of it, but then everybody's like, it's funny because there are people who have different thoughts on this. You know, definitely there were people on his thread that were feeling a certain way. People on my thread, I don't think it was because they were friends of either one of us that felt that way, but it was just interesting to see like the disciples of one person kind of going down that path of like, you know, make your business the best and don't like whatever. And then people are like, no, I have, I have plenty of income streams. So I think it's just, you know, there isn't, this isn't a, a black and white right. issue. You know, I think right. it's definitely gray and, and there's definitely like, like I said, two ways to skin a cat here. Um, sure. it just depends on what you, what you want. But, um, yeah, w- what I got out of it was 
make sure to clarify and write better. So good, <laughs> good, good on me to, to, to do that. So um, I'm just glad it was something to keep, you know, people thinking and talking and, and that's awesome, man. I hope, I hope it helps people think about where they want to be with their business, you know? Got it. So. Uh, <laughs> and, okay. I'm just curious. Who is CAWA 25? That's, that's that, my employee that was just he here. He just said, I think we can all agree Byron's employee is a jerk. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's Wade. That's Wade. He's my, yeah, he's, he's my, my, like I said, my second command. He's the reason why I'm a multi-op. So I kind of let him slide uh, okay. with being uh questionable. He, uh, never mind. This is a story for another, another time. Okay. Okay. So, so Byron, like maybe you could touch on uh, uh, like the different uh, wedding aspects that you have, like under Buckeye. Like, what are all the different things that you have besides DJ services that go into it? So I own, see, dude. Um, so we started, uh, I expanded to a multi-op in 2005, um, no, 2007. It was 2007 when in the, the, the multi. And then from there, we went into uh, photography three years ago. Uh, Photo Boost was in 2010. Um, I have planning, officiating. I opened a wedding venue in two and a half years ago. We do micro weddings over there. That's just where I, I did the first part of this. Um, we call it Zinnia, but it's like 50 people or less. Uh, mm. And we pump out weddings all day long. So basically like it's, it, it's an You're alternative. Like Vegas in Columbus. What's that? Yeah, it <laughs> like really Vegas is. Vegas like, in Columbus. Well, it's designed so that people that don't want to go to the courthouse don't have to. So most of the people, most that we marry over there, you know, it's 10 or less. Sometimes it's just a bride and groom and our officiant. Um, right. And okay. so we, we do weddings over there. <clears throat> all day long, all week long. And so that's, that is our um, forerunner to our big venue. Um, I'm looking at buying a uh, 9,000 square foot school that was built in 1903 and turning that into a wedding venue. Right. Um, the transportation thing is, is in the works, but yeah, we make, I make majority of my money on DJs. We do about 500 weddings a year between uh, there's eight of us here. Uh, and so we do the, the DJ and by far, but we flipped it kind of on its head where that there's a hierarchy where, as you all know, you know, uh, bride and groom book a wedding venue and then they book a caterer a photographer da, 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 djs at the bottom we're at the point now where they're booking the venue and then they're booking us and they don't have anything else booked so that's where we added on the photography and the and the photo booths and the officiating and the and the planning and pretty much everything but video um or the right. flowers which is what keith does um but i yeah I haven't, I haven't got that far yet but the idea is to make it a wedding a wedding empire so that's why i call myself an event group rather than just you know a dj company got so it. do you do you ever like so it, do you ever market those things individually or no. does it, so it's all, all or nothing? So, well, okay. so, hustle. so the, so the wedding, the wedding venue is independent. Um, we, the only, the only correlation between the two there is that we'd see a lot of repeat business that we've had on the Buckeye end on the front end where, <laughs> where they got married five or six years ago and spent $30,000 on a wedding and then it didn't work out. So the second time around, they don't want to spend the money. So they just go over there and in and out the door in half an hour. So we right. see some repeat business over there, but that's, there's no other correlation. Sometimes you'll know, we'll have people do bridal, um, their, their rehearsals uh over there right um, but that one's kind of independent it's from the buckeye and the photography we charge considerably more if they book photography on its own or the planning on its own or you know what i mean so the idea is that we group them in and i can i can turn it into a multi-thousand dollar wedding pretty fast got uh, it i make i make a lot of money um on the what you would call a side hustle and what yeah. i call it an extension of my business whereas um, like kc you have literally two uh, like legal entities that are separate right yeah so in other I words have Fred Fox Studios is its own legal entity, um, and we're so we're going to be this February. We'll be in business a hundred years, and then uh, Aberdeen's Wedding Florist has been in business sixty years now, and I bought those entities as their own brands and such. And it's interesting because we get people all the time that email us. You did my mom's wedding. You did my sister's wedding. You did my aunt's wedding. You know and and Fred Fox for a long time here really dominated the market, but very much like what we're all feeling, which is why some people should consider a side hustle there. The number of marriages are down and the number of competition is way, way up. So, you know, the pie is cut a lot thinner and, uh, and go from there. So have you ever, Sorry, Brian. go ahead. I was just say, have you ever, have you ever thought about going Byron's route and just put changing the model completely and going like event group or like putting it no. all under one? And no, why? Because, why cause I bought, cause I bought these brands for a specific reason. 
Mm. You know, and I mean, when even though the phone numbers may have changed over the years and locations may have moved or what have you, if somebody remembers Fred Fox Studios and they Google it, they're going to find us. And fortunately, you know, we've got fantastic online reviews and such. And, you know, in my mind, we have established 1919 on our is part of our logo. But the reality is we have all contemporary photography on there. So, I mean, we're just in my opinion, we look just like the new hot, you know, studio or what have you. We just have the fact that we've been in business for on almost 100 years as a as a point. So and trust me, next year when we celebrate it on February 1st, we'll do press releases galore to the newspapers and the TV stations and hopefully get people to come out and touch base with us and and go from there. And And we get people all the time when we throw out interactive things on Facebook we'll find people like that are in their sixties that have said, Oh yeah, you did our wedding 50 years ago, 40 years ago. Um, my business partner, Dina for my flower shop, her grandparents used Fred Fox and it was way back in the day where you actually went into the studio and stood there like all of our grandparents did. And the photographer didn't come out. But mm -hmm. the funny part about it is in the bottom right corner, it says Fred Fox studios in there. And, so, I mean, it was, it was pretty cool to see. So I get it all the time. I mean, I get people that recognize the brand all the time. And so. Keith, you made a good point with that, with the referrals, you know, mm -hmm. you, that was something that Brian brought up in his article was that, Hey, you know, this, this additional revenue stream, like for Uber was an example that he gave, you know, people that are in the car, you can market to. And my thing is as a multi-op, if we're doing 500 weddings a year and we have 150 people at each one of those weddings, that's a crap load of people. Like it's just, I talked about it in my seminar in Vegas, but it's a snowball. Like we've performed in front of more people than the entire city of New Orleans put together, like right. over, the, over the years. So, you know, it, it, my thing is rather than go out and, and, and sell that as a point of referral, I think that you should just, you know, it's harder for the single guys to, you know, you're limited to the amount of weddings you can do but for multi-op right. the referral base the best thing you could do is just do more weddings because you're in front of more clients potential clients and you're in front of more venues venue staff people that can refer you and so, mike walter says the same thing well, that's, that's a big argument that he has as well yeah again clarity and article is always good i i was trying to make the, the point that new clientele isn't the reason to go into a, a side it was hustle. an additional benefit no, it's, no, it's a it. byproduct of that so like you know and and again uber was just one example bad bad one to put up as my title probably but that could have been like in other words if you like for me when i was um start when i started on i made this point in the article too where i uh i i was so I came from California, moved to Florida. That's where I started my multi-op, uh, really started it. And um, I was going back and forth myself. And what happened was the bookings that I had projected hadn't come in. And I didn't want to come out of my savings with it. So I literally took a temp job while I was in California because I had a certain dollar amount that I wanted to hit. And so I took this temp job at this office. And uh, some of these people in the office were just asking why I was doing this. And I said, well, because, you know, I'm, I'm working on trying to make this thing full time. Anyway, long story short, um, I booked like four weddings out of that particular corporate job that ended up being I would never have gotten those contacts had I not been in there. And again, it wasn't me going there to get the contacts. It just was a byproduct of that. And and so you never know. I mean, just having those expanded circles, you never know what's going to come from those. And that was kind of the point. It was not like Mike, of course, drilled down on, yeah, you're going to get, it's one-to-one. -one. You're going to go on an Uber and you're going to meet this guy. You could do that just by talking to somebody at a networking group. Well, no, no, no. I wasn't saying that that's the reason right. you go into it. It's a byproduct. Well, and when I reinvented myself, when I had a falling out with my partner uh, at, uh, when I owned Spin and Discs, um, I was all set to, my side hustle to make my nut was going to be, doing karaoke and bars like two nights a week or trivia or what have you. I was really blessed that while I was putting together my karaoke stuff or considering it, I had visited every banquet hall, talked to every person I knew. And this was 2009. I remember actually arguing at the time with my girlfriend at the time um, about being on LinkedIn and, and putting everything up on Facebook and friending at the time, all of the brides that I had known and she goes, do you really think that makes a difference? And it, and it actually saved my butt because I, I never managed to find the time to go do karaoke because I was too busy meeting with brides and families having bar mitzvahs. And 
I had contacted all of my school contacts trying to, uh, um, so, you know, that was that. And so I got lucky, you know, I got lucky that a lot of people liked me, respected me, cared about me. And, and I, in fact, I was willing to take over all of the contracts for people that had me booked at the other company and eat the deposit. Cause I didn't feel it was right that they had to get involved with canceling their contract, losing their deposit. And what was really even more amazing was people said, now, if you're starting over again, you need the money. We're going to fight to get our deposit back and we're paying you in full, which was amazing. I mean, I was really, really blessed by it and I'm still grateful to this day for all of it. So, so that was that. So again, I understand Byron's thing where sometimes the side hustle is taking, taking your eye off the prize and you need to focus on, on right. it. And I get, you know, Brian's thing that sometimes you can multitask and sometimes you need to multitask and, and go from there as well. So, you know, again, vanilla and chocolate and right. One side better, it's just different. Well, and even the exit strategy, I was trying to, I, I probably should clarify that too, because um, I think Byron, you made the point and yours that like, you know, a, I think you wanted, you were saying that the exit strategy for me wasn't to have this side hustle fill the pipeline. Like my exit strategy for my own business DJ wise would be to have it run itself when I'm done DJing. I don't even want to manage it at the end of the day. It's, it's, to me, it's an investment. It's an invest, like almost like a, a piece of real estate. And that is just one thing that I hope manages itself. I get this right staffing in place. And then I want to pursue another passion. I don't know what that is at this point. I have no idea, but I, it's probably good to dabble in that it, once I start getting to that point, you know what I mean? Instead right. of like it ends and then I'm like, I don't know what I want to do. And that's well, not that's a great. bad thing, you know, but no, that's where not. I'm at with it. And that's pretty much where I'm at right now. I mean, like I said, this year, you know, my, my, my point was every year that we hit our previous year's numbers, um, we go up in price, right? And eventually we'll find that cap where we've limited out. And so normally I split that with my staff. So the way that my, my exit plan is happening this year is um, when we hit our previous year's numbers, which we're two away from doing that, I'm no longer going to book, awesome. right? And so uh, <clears throat> from there, I'm going to take this the increase. Normally I split it 50-50 with the staff, but this time I'm going to take it. So it'll be 100, you know, 500 weddings at $100 a piece because that's our every year's 100 bucks. Um, that's $50,000 that I am going to make just from stepping away. And that will mm. kind of replace roughly what I personally make out there DJing, but then I make about mm. twenty dollars to 25000 per rig per year profit. So I'll make about 70 to 75,000 just by walking away. And so I already have staff here that does all the prep work and does all the, mm. the behind the scenes. Really my only role is scheduling and training. Um, and so I'm gonna get to the point, I'm gonna give it another year after that where I can get, we're gonna go um, expand into other cities. We're going into Cleveland and we're going into Cincy and I'm gonna oversee that expansion. My existing staff's gonna go out there and we're gonna create um, multis there. So I'm gonna oversee that. And then I'm gonna get to the point where like the venue that I was talking about, buying the school um, mm -hmm. that's my passion I want to go because my really my thing is that I'm an entrepreneur like I like building businesses and then you know I get I get tired of it and right you know, like I said, you know it's one of those things where I've been I've done close to 900 weddings myself and I'm done right so I'm gonna uh, that's my exit strategy so I've already got it in place and uh and and <clears throat> and I don't need to drive an Uber <laughs> yeah well, um, see, someone, but, but here's the ahead. thing, Brian, he's talked about all these businesses doing this, but, but he told me privately, he's still too busy to come to the marquee show. I am. Because and got, make it. So who does a wedding show, a DJ delicate. show in July, in the middle of the wedding season? It's not the middle of the wedding season. For it's you. a lull. It, for you, I'll pull in, up my schedule. Lots I of shit in Miami, schedule. it's 105 degrees out. It's like 7,000 degrees in Vegas. So somebody has a question for Byron in here, yeah, and right. uh, I don't think he has to answer it maybe this way, but his, the question is, what's the annual gross from micro weddings? Maybe you just, you don't want to give a number. How about like percentage wise? Is that making up maybe 25% so, of your revenue for everything or so where are you at? Here's, here's how I approach that, right? Like I created the business over there and uh, it was basically what it was, was a driving school and it closed and it, it's in the same complex as my, my current office. And so I'm looking at this spot over there I'm like, man, how can I make money? And an officiant that I ran into and mentioned that he had done, he has what they call, um, uh, it's, uh, I forget the name of it now, but they said they did a thousand weddings in one year, this micro wedding type. Right. But it's in and out, like it's as simple as $25. We'll sign your marriage license and out you go. 
go. So I don't know how truthful that was, but I looked at my space and I know how crafty I went over and I, and I met him over there and looked at it. And I'm like, dude, I can do this 10 times better with a pretty minimal investments. So right. I think I have like, I don't know, 15, 17,000 all said and done in the renovation over there, which isn't a lot. Um, and so I created this business, created the website and then I'm like, I don't want to run this. So I gave it to my wife. And so she does all the scheduling and stuff over there. So my deal is, is as long as she gives me, uh, covers my expenses. So the utilities and the rent, then she can have that money and do whatever she, she wants with it. Um, and so basically she just <clears throat> there, does a, does a scheduling, um, email. So it's your wife's side hustle. Yeah, exactly. Is what it what it boils down to. Yeah, because like I said, she was a teacher and she quit um to take care of the kids. And you know, we get bored with her. We're at school during the day, so she answers some emails over there, and I answer emails for this side. And and then the kids come home, and and we're together as a family, which is nice. So, so what's the mic? Uh, it it makes it up. It's it's more than paid for itself, and it yeah. makes enough that she doesn't have to ask me for any money at all, which is great. <laughs> So what comes with the micro wedding? Because I'm just some people are asking some of these questions. So okay, so so uh, is, we have what we call our sit and signs, which is what the other people do, where you come in and we literally sign your marriage certificate. Um, there's no I do's, there's no kisses, there's none of that. It's just a we sign your uh, up the door you go. Um, that's mm. thirty bucks. You know, okay, you but time out, time out. How, yeah. how many of those will you do a month? Uh, like, I, can, I can look at the schedule and tell you if you guesstimate. Um, Oh. Talk about an so, romantic wedding. Like, well, no, well, a I, lot of them are doing it for insurance reasons, or you know, right. they have to produce document their documentation to us, their, their IDs. But we see, we see, we see some all kinds of crazy stuff over there. Uh, but yeah, insurance. Um, we get it know, all the time because we're like a military town, military right. town, and so these guys need the need it for their benefits. So they ask right. for it a lot. So mm. yep. so we see those. We see a lot of those there. Um, that probably makes up. If I'm looking at the schedule, it probably makes up not even a quarter of what we do um, this month. So we do those and then we do uh, our ceremonies are, are structured from as little as, you know, 10 people or less half an hour, hundred bucks out the door you go. Um, and then we can get bigger where you have 50 people. And then, and then we force them to use in-house photography. So if they want photography, they have to use us. Uh, otherwise they have an outside photography fee. And that's our proving ground for our photographers because we're slowly but surely building a multi-op for our photography end as well. And so they prove themselves over there at Zinnia and then, um, and then they come <clears> up. <throat> but we do those and then we've started to do uh, receptions, but we can only hold 40 people. We do 55, I think, is our max on a ceremony, but 40 is the only that we can do on receptions. And so the person that runs it actually is 25 years. She was a, at a venue, a coordinator, and she kept telling me, hey, if you ever need a planner, if you ever need a planner, I'll quit my job and come work for you. And I'm like, there's no way. You've been here for 25 years. But she did. And so she doubles as my officiant here, um, my planner here, and then she does pretty much everything over there. My wife schedules it all, but but uh, we have a dedicated employee that does all of that. So uh, she's busy. We do them all week long and <clears throat> very interesting characters because uh, if you're only paying 100 bucks to get married, um, yeah. That's awesome, man. What, a, what an interesting model. <laughs> uh, now, I'm sure there's you. some people, because the other thing that Byron's kind of known for is he's got a business model that is – significantly uh, lower than the national average but here's what's great it's 8 59 my time 9 59 your time and we are done in two minutes so this is the teaser for another episode so we will talk about your business model your rationale if you're willing to come back and talk to us about sure. it gladly <laughs> see huh how's that for a dynasty cliffhanger <laughs> huh? nice so can I swear next time? It makes this a lot easier. <laughs> no, you've been good. It's been an yeah. hour. Disclaimer up I here, know. like a parental advisory lyric in the corner, <clears throat> symbol or whatever. Like, no, okay. I try. You've been you've been really good. I've restrained myself. Uh, You're not welcome. a problem. I wish we had an outtake that we could edit in and just bleep it, like uh, like in um, Goodfellas. You're funny, funny how, and just run through it that way. <laughs> But yeah, it's eight fifty nine. So uh, Brian, any close yeah. thoughts, my good friend? No, man. I think we like beat this thing to the ground finally. I think uh, this is the exclamation point. So I feel like uh, clarity got out. And the wrap uh, up is: as long as you're working in the wedding or special event industry, you can do whatever you want on the side. Yeah, keep it under the umbrella. If you now, drive Uber, you're a piece of dog. Yeah. <laughs> I almost used the c word. So what can I write next month? <laughs> 
Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Ask Byron talk, a few of the things that talk bother. about talk about the worth movement, and then <laughs> oh boy, and there it is. <laughs> And there Classic. it is. Classic. So again, chocolate, vanilla. People have different ideas, different business models. So uh, that's that. So what time is it by you, Brian? Now it's it's four a.m. So 4 I got a, I got a ten a.m. flight. So I got to get here shortly. He's got to hit it. So very good. So Brian, you have an amazing, uh, successful weekend. Yeah. Byron, thank you oh so much for coming in. You were a gentleman. Absolutely. You yeah, uh, awesome. you were well behaved and we appreciate it. And, and you know, everyone's gonna be like, that guy's not who I thought he was. I'm kind of disappointed. Because <laughs> I wasn't allowed um, to be. Well <laughs> no, but look, you, you were well spoken. You were you I thought you conducted yourself fantastically. So and uh, for everybody else watching, I would sincerely appreciate it if you went to uh, marqueeshow.com and got your passes sooner than later for our show we've got three fabulous days packed and we are going to show you how to move to columbus and be a better disc jockey service than byron because he's too busy to learn <laughs> so <laughs> down to. so everybody once again thank you all for watching share and like it what's on that? you i said share and like this uh this on yeah, facebook absolutely. Gives us maybe, the ratings. We got to beat Mike and some Joe. Sort of a texting system, like the guys uh, from PHDJ. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if they just text everybody. I haven't done it. Have you done it? Do, do they text no. thing their SoundClouds up? I don't know. I, I'm, I, not, I'm not on the distribution. I don't know. I hate texting to begin with, anyway. So, so there's that. Now Bri Brian's going to be at uh, Midwest DJs Live. Yeah. Uh, two weeks, right? Two weeks. Uh, yeah, I think so. So you go from beautiful Europe to Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah. So. That'll be that. And Byron's probably too busy to come to Midwest DJs Live because it's the end of April, right? It is. Yep. So we'll see him again in March um, in Vegas, probably. Probably, yeah. Speaking, not speaking, who knows? I'm uh, so, probably speaking. There we go. Okay. There's a plug for that. And uh, once again, everybody, thank you so much. We hope that you guys enjoyed the show. Share this tell people about it we're here every thursday night for must see tv and brian are you with us next month or next week or are you not i'm gonna try it's i'll okay. be in at engage so i don't know we'll see if it's and where's engaged like. at again what it's in uh sardinia italy right sardinia so, sardinia where sardines are made yeah okay <laughs> very good all right everybody good night and god bless we'll see you all real soon bye-bye Tonight's DJ and TV show is sponsored in part by Electro Voice, DJ Event Planner, ADJ, NLFX Professional, Promo Only, Newmark, and DJ and TV Insiders.